All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at related rates. So these are questions where we have two derivatives and we try to make a function that connects the two to solve a problem. So I'm going to jump straight into it and you should see after we do a few problems exactly what we're talking about here and how we do this. So we have a 10 foot ladder resting against a wall. I'm going to draw pictures for all of this. So here we go, 10 foot ladder up against the wall. The bottom of the ladder slides away at one foot per second. So how do we talk about this in derivatives? We can say that dx dt is equal to one foot per second. So that's how fast it's sliding away. How fast is the top of the ladder falling when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? So we want to know how fast it's falling when this distance here is equal to six. And we have a notation for that. We say dy dt when x is equal to 6 is equal to what? And we know that dx dt is equal to 1. So let's find a formula for this triangle. So we know this is 10. This is some unknown value y. And what we don't want to make the mistake of doing is plugging x equal to 6 right away because we just want to make it an x so that way when we differentiate we get a dx dt. If we plug in x right away we're not going to get a dx dt. So we know the Pythagoras formula x squared plus y squared is equal to 100 and this is what we mean by related rates. We have found a formula that relates x and y which are dx dt and dy dt. So that's what we found. So now we're going to differentiate implicitly. So we're going to get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt is equal to 0 because we have differentiated the whole equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for dy dt and that is going to be equal to minus 2x over 2y dx dt. You can check this for yourself. I did this pretty quick, but this is right. And then we can simplify this down to negative x over y times dx dt. Okay, so now we have our formula, and now we can start plugging in our x and y values and our dx dt values. So this is going to be equal to, we have negative 6, since x is 6, over, we don't know y yet, but we know that dx dt is equal to 1. So how do we find y? Well, we have our formula here, x squared plus y squared is equal to 100. So when we plug x is equal to 6 in there, then we get 36 plus y squared is equal to 100. So we're going to get y is equal to 8. So we can plug that in there. And then we're going to get that dy dt is equal to negative 3 fourths. And this is going to be in feet per second. So we have now figured out that dy dt is equal to negative 3 fourth feet per second. So what does that mean? That means that when the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall, it, the top of the ladder is moving down at 0 0.75 feet per second. And if you're saying, wait, what did you do here? What I did was I plotted all of our variables we have a rate of change of our x, and we want to find a rate of change with y. But we only have x, so we have to draw a picture to figure out what formula we can use to relate x and y, differentiate it, and then solve. So I'm going to show you another example that has to do with shapes. So we have air being pumped into a spherical balloon. Okay, here is my lovely spherical balloon. We'll draw a little cross section just so you know it's spherical and it's being blown up at 100 cubic centimeters per second. So that's the same thing as saying the volume is increasing by 100 centimeters cubed per second. And we want to know how fast the radius is increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters per second. Uh, we can also rewrite the diameter as 25 or the radius is equal to 25 centimeters since diameter is two times the radius. Okay, so we want to know dr dt when r is equal to 25. 
So do we have a formula that relates the derivative of the volume with the derivative of the radius? Well, yeah, we have the volume of a sphere, which is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. If you don't know the formula off the top of your head, you might want to review some formulas of basic solids, so that way when you get these questions in exams, you don't get really confused. So now we will just differentiate both sides with respect to time. So this will be 4 pi r squared times dr dt. And again, it's just 4 thirds times 3 is 12 thirds, which is 4, so I simplified it right off the bat. And now we want to solve for dr dt. So dr dt is equal to the volume, or the derivative of the volume, multiplied by 1 over 4 pi r squared. And we just want to find out what dr dt is when the volume, so we know the change is 100, multiplied by 1 over 4 times pi 25 squared, because the radius is 25. So with the lovely powers of simplification, this is the same thing as 25 over pi 25 squared, which is the same thing as 1 over 25 pi. So dr dt, when r is equal to 25, is equal to 1 over 25 pi centimeters cubed per second. And I think this example is a little bit more straightforward to follow because we're dealing with volumes and you can kind of see how the radius and volume uh, relate to each other. Well, in the previous example, having an x and y, it makes sense conceptually, but the formula is a little bit harder because it's kind of contained within itself. It's not like, oh, I have this three-dimensional shape and I want to figure out some two-dimensional section of the shape. So I'm not going to give you guys a practice question on this one because... Uh, this question is a little bit too difficult for a practice question, so I'm going to go through it with you guys. James is walking along the beach, 20 feet away from a lighthouse perpendicular to him. So, let's do a picture. Here's James. He's pink because boys can be pink in this day and age. It's totally okay. And he is 20 meters away from a lighthouse, which uh, I have a feeling this is going to be drawn really inappropriately. So I'm going to try not to. You know what? That's totally not appropriate, but I'm going to leave it like that anyway. And this is 20 meters away from James. And he is walking to the right at 4 feet per second. So dx dt is equal to 4 meters per second. Feet per second. Feet per second. We want to know how fast the angle between James and the lighthouse is changing when he's moved 15 feet to the right. So if we give in theta here, we want to know d theta dt when x is equal to 15. And this might seem crazy to you, because what do you mean we have angles in here? So do we have a formula for a situation like this? And the first thing you say is no, no we don't, but we actually do. In fact, you might remember this from trig. Tan of theta is equal to x over 20. So 20 tan of theta is equal to x. Now we have a theta and an x, which means that we have a function that relates the two together. So let's differentiate them with respect to time. So we get 20 secant squared theta d theta dt is equal to dx dt. And now we can solve for d theta dt. So d theta dt is equal to dx dt times 1 over 20 secant squared theta. But we don't like dealing with secant squared thetas. So we're going to rewrite this using our trig laws as dx dt times cosine squared theta over 20. And now we just need to start plugging things in. So the only thing we don't know is we don't know what cos squared of theta is. So let's let's do some simple trig right now. So we know the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So we're going to draw our little triangle here. We know this is 20. We know this will be 15. And I'm not going to write out the whole equation here, but 20 squared plus 15 squared is equal to the square root of 25. So this will be 25 right here. So this is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 20 over 25, which we can rewrite as 4 fifths, which means that cosine of squared theta will be 16 over 25. Okay, so let's plug that in to this here. So we have dx dt is equal to 4, which we got up here from our lovely picture. Cos squared theta is equal to 16 over 25, and that's divided by 20. So this is going to be equal to, well, 4 over 20 is the same thing as 1 fifth times 16 over 25, so this is going to be equal to 16 over 125, which is the same thing as 0 0.128 radians. So that is how fast our lighthouse angle is changing to James when James is 15 feet to the right of where he started. So that's pretty cool. We just used a formula that relates our theta value with the distance that he walks to the right, and we have found out how fast the angle of a lighthouse is changing when he's moving at a certain distance. In fact, if we made it so it was 12 feet to the right instead, suppose it was 12 feet, then the angle would be a little bit different. And this is always true. So these are related rates questions. There's a lot more. They kind of follow this example. Usually they're either a volume question, a Pythagoras question, or an angle question. So with these three tricks, you can probably figure out absolutely everything you need to know about related rates questions. If you do have more questions about this, post them in the comments with a full question. I can do a video on this. I have no problem doing more related race questions because these can be tough. But this should be sufficient enough to get you guys to go out on your own, try some questions, and hopefully have some success. So this is the first bit of applicable derivatives. Next time we're going to start looking at uh, maximum and minimum values and stuff like that. So master these and... You should be good to go for the hardest questions on probably your second midterm, if I had to guess. If this is where you are in the course, this is probably right before your second midterm.